All right, kind of moving along here. Still thinking about esters. We've kind of focused in on esters. Now, esters with water, but notice here, HCl. So now we're going to be in acidic conditions. Right, strong acids around. So that's going to make things a little bit different. So we'll talk about what's going to happen first, but again, this is called a hydrolysis reaction. Basically what that means is we're adding water to this. We're hydrolyzing it. Right, so the group we have here is going to be replaced with H or OH, leaving the alcohol. So we're going to hydrolyze this ester. So a hydrolysis reaction turns an ester into an acid. That's what a hydrolysis reaction is in this case. Ester to an acid. Another type of reaction with an ester and a acid in this case is something called a transesterification. This is essentially a do -si do of esters, where we react an alcohol with an ester, and we get a new ester and a different alcohol. Right? Essentially, this piece and this piece are switching spots, switching spots. So we call this a transesterification, turning an ester and one alcohol into a new ester and a, the other alcohol, another alcohol. Now I'll show the mechanism for these again. Again though, acidic conditions, strong acid, H plus is around. Right? Another reaction would be an ester with an amine. Right? We're going downhill again, right? Because an ester is more stable than an amide, right? We're made up of amides, that's more stable. Right? And this again, this is just with some heat. Usually they have to add, I would, I would, I would hearken to say they're gonna need some HCl to make this to go as well. Um, so this is usually done in acidic conditions as well. And they call this aminolysis, but essentially turning an ester into an amide. Again, I'm gonna show the mechanism now for all of these and how it'll work. Let's take a look at what happens with some of these reactions. Let's take a look at that first one, that hydrolysis um, of an ester. So we're taking an ester and we're going to react it with some HCl and the solvent really is water. We're going to end up with a carboxylic acid and in this case methanol. I would hearken to say I think this HCl is a catalyst, so we've got to regenerate that as well. First step, we need to identify the electrophile and the nucleophile. So hopefully by now everybody knows we have HCl around or strong acid. That is always going to be my electrophile. And my nucleophile is actually going to be the lone pair on the ester, carbon to carbon oxygen. Now why, why this oxygen? That's because if you look at the resonance, possibilities. All right, if I label this 1 and this 2 oxygen, if I start drawing the resonance structure with a lone pair, you'll see 1 oxygen or oxygen 1 actually is more electron rich than oxygen 2. So that's why oxygen 1 acts like the nucleophile in all these cases. And it will be that way in any of these resonance forms. So this oxygen 1 in this case will be the nucleophile first. It's a good kind of side note to remember what's going on there. Okay, so the first step, we've protonated the oxygen. That's an equilibrium process. Now, why would we want to do that? All right, so what did that get us? Well, and see how minus, and then a whole bunch of water floating around because water is solvent. Well, this did, by protoning this oxygen, that made this carbon of the carbonyl here that much more delta plus. Right? We've polarized that bond even more by making this oxygen right, have another bond there. It's not happy. That makes this carbon that much more delta plus. Now, Cl minus is a better nucleophile than water, but there's a ton of water around, so water is going to be the one that attacks. So this is that first step, addition step. Right? We go from sp2 to sp3. We form that tetrahedral intermediate, OCH3. You gotta make sure we balance our charge, get overall plus charge, right, in acidic conditions. And the water still has the H on there, so that's a plus there. Now, at this point, 
we're going to need to do something called a proton transfer. So now at this point you can do that proton transfer I was just saying. And essentially what that means is right, I can move the H here to there. Because that's what I'm going to try to get rid of it. The book will show maybe another molecule of water doing that. And then it's not a step. It's just more steps. Don't need to do it, in my opinion. It's kind of a lazy way to do it, but that's okay. Time sometimes is of the essence. And now what you've done is you've turned this part, right, the ester part, into a better leaving group. Right now here, right, this is still the best leaving group. But now this is a really good leaving group. So now when these electrons come down, this will get kicked out. And we have now, right, of course, balancing our charges. There's a, the acid, and we've made methanol. And the final step is regenerating our catalyst, and that gets us to our final product, regenerating that H plus catalyst. New steps, this proton transfer, right? Shifting the proton around to wherever you want it to move to make one group a better leaving group. And of course, here's our elimination step as well. The proton transfer is a new step. Shifting that proton around. The book will show the solvent doing it. That's fine. It just takes another step in there. But you could just say proton transfer. Have these electrons, whatever group you want to leave, take those like that H. That'll now have the plus charge. Now it's a better leaving group. That'll leave. And make sure you regenerate cows at the end. Kind of a fun one to think about also, remember, is what leaving group's the best, right? Why is this more reactive than this, right? Remember, if this leaves, this can do, this O, these electrons here, right, are more stable. This molecule is more stable because it, of course, can do resonance, whereas this cannot do resonance. So be careful, this phenyl acid, that's a good leaving group because it can do resonance. So just because it's an OC doesn't mean it's all, not all the same, right? If you can do resonance, you, of course, are a better leaving group, more stable. Esters are pretty common things found. Um, a lot of waxes, bees, um, also a lot of our, our, our fatty acids, a lot of fragrances come from esters. Esters usually smell really good. Um, so a lot of our taste, smell, molecules come from that. Obviously, some of these long-chain ones are part of uh, fatty acids and beeswax, um, all sorts of things. Again, this is just now showing the book, emphasizing what I told you before about why this oxygen is the one that's protonated. It's because of it has the most electron density, and it because of this resonance contributor, right? This oxygen, if this was if we labeled them one and two, oxygen one, right? The resonance structure shows us oxygen one is more electron dense. That means these that's more likely where the H is going to get attached to. Here is the text version of what I just showed you on a blank uh, slide. A uh, little different um, in the, this case. What they do, I'll back out here a little bit. What they do, they show right the oxygen, the most electron rich oxygen attacks the H, so it's an acid, right? Water attacks the the now more delta plus carbon, this is right, why do we add the acid? To make this carbon more electrophilic. Now they'll show right, the tetrahedral intermediate, and this time they'll show a base, which basically I would say is just more water in the solution doing that. Right? So it's really just the water in the solution doing that, transferring that proton around. Once you've protonated that water, then it can be, that proton now can get moved to whatever group you want to have leave. Now you've turned the group you want to have leave into a better leaving group, that comes down. You regenerate the catalyst, which would be, you could think of B as C minus, Cl minus or water, right? HCl is a strong acid, so H3O plus is the same. Elimination, kick that out, regenerate the catalyst, you're good to go. Ester to carboxylic acid hydrolysis. Right, again, these are equilibrium reactions. How would you drive equilibrium reactions? Because right, we, we said esters and acids are about the same energy levels. Right? OCH3, OCH3 is just about as good a group as OH. But if you add a lot more of the star material reagent, you can shift equilibrium. Right? You can get rid of 
one of the products you could boil off the methanol or you could add a lot of water and you shift equilibrium. For a trans serification, it's basically the same idea as before, except now we're doing this do si do. And we want this to be the good leaving group. So when we do the proton transfer, we want to put the H and make this a, have a plus charge. Again, we're doing this, right? Why do we protonate? Right? Why 